everybody. Welcome back to Gen X Technology Solutions. My name is Scott, and today we're going to be talking about home firewall solutions and what you should be deploying and why you should be deploying it as soon as you can. And we're not going to talk about anything incredibly complicated. This is going to be for the average home user, but keep in mind that this solution is also deployed on the enterprise level. So before we get into that, let's roll the intro. So before we get started today, I want you to take a look at your home router and I want you to go to the firmware update page and I want you to look at the date on when the last time the firmware was updated and attempt to go out and get a new one. You know, most of the time development resources from these companies are put into developing new routers and the software that goes behind those routers. And sometimes these older routers get left behind and the firmware is no longer updated. And as a result, a lot of state actors out there are targeting these home routers and even not just state actors, but the guy in the basement uh, trying to steal identities or take data off your network or turn your IOT devices into DDoS weapons. They're all targeting these home routers. And so take a look at the date on your home router and that'll be reason number one why you should be using uh, a software firewall like Untangle or PF sense. Now, when you hear the term software based firewall, basically it just means it's a firewall that's installed on a computer or server and tasked with network security. That's basically the definition of what a software firewall is. So you can download this firewall and install it on whatever hardware you will meets their minimum requirements. Then of course you can scale up from there. And that brings us to reason number two, why you should be using a threat management system like this, um, it scales well. So when I first started in the IT business a while back, you know, a good home internet connection was between one and five megabits and your device density was very low. So you had maybe a couple of computers, maybe a phone and maybe like an Xbox or some other gaming device. And back then you didn't have an IOT network. Uh, with refrigerators and doorbells, light bulbs, cameras, and all sorts of other devices that you have now. So your device density is way up now, as is the threat density that comes along with that. And another thing that's changed is that your bandwidth is much more now. So your average home internet connection these days is in the 20 to 40 megabit range. But a lot of you living in urban areas may have gigabit connectivity. May, you might even have synchronous gigabit connectivity. So, um, and the rest of us will have asynchronous gigabit connectivity if we do have that kind of bandwidth to our homes. And I'm running two gigabit connections at my house. And so you want a, a firewall that will scale because there's only so much RAM and CPU that you can get inside one of those off the shelf. Uh, routing devices and wireless access points that are all combined into one. And so they may not scale with your internet connection and your needs. So device density is up, bandwidth is up, and as a result, um, requirements are up. And so something like this runs a lot of apps on it. Um, and, and you're going to want to have the hardware in place to scale with it in the future. And as you can see here, we're running an old i5 2500K CPU at 3.3 gigahertz with eight gigs of RAM and an actual mechanical disk in the 150 gigabit, gigabyte range. So a fairly old machine. And as you can see, even though we're not passing a ton of bandwidth right now, even if I were to go to fast.com, and max out both my gigabit connections, you would still be in the low green here, even though it's doing IDS, VPN, WAN balancing, WAN failover, firewall, lots of other things, reporting. Um, it still won't max out the CPU. So the hardware requirements are not steep um, for this type of use case. And so scalability is reason number two why you might want to think about putting a firewall in place like this. Um, and finally, reason number three kind of goes back to reason number one, and that is if you go to the upgrade tab here, this, this happens all of the time. Um, 
you know, companies like uh, uh, Arista Threat Management, they upgrade their firewalls all the time. Um, and, and so you'll see a few updates a year in most cases at the very least. And if obviously if something was the, was found out that, you know, turned out to be a vulnerability, I'm sure they would release, release an upgrade fairly quickly, but the firewall is constantly being upgraded. So you don't have to worry about having something that's out of date. That's not constantly being developed. As long as the company offers the software solution, it will be updated and upgraded. And that is a really nice reason to be on Untangle on Firewall. So before we end the video, what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna go through a couple of things that I do with the firewall, and then I'm gonna do another video on how to install it and deploy it. And obviously you can deploy it on your own hardware. I had it deployed in a Hyper-V virtual instance for a while, probably not recommended for any professional deployment, but um, for home deployment, it was fine. And, and we'll do another video in the future soon, probably within the next week or two on how to install Untangle. And once again, the reason I like installing Untangle over PFSense is because it's just a point and click installation. Um, most people, uh, even if you didn't have a lot of experience in IT, pr could probably get this firewall installed without too much trouble. And so we'll talk about that in a future update. But um, meanwhile, let's click on the apps tab here. And a couple of things that I like about this, of course, is WAN fell over. Basically, I have two gigabit internet connections coming to the home. And what WAN failover does for me is if, if there's an outage on one interface, it'll flip it over to the other one. And for those of you who may have two internet connections plus a LTE connection that you want to fail over to, that can be pretty useful. But um, just the failover is fairly seamless. Uh, most of the end users won't know that anything has happened. And so it's transparent to the user, as we like to say in the IT industry, and they don't know what's happening there. And so WAN failover is a really nice feature. Now, another feature that I really like is WAN balancer. And of course, WAN balancer is interesting to me because uh, if you game and stream at the same time and you have your streaming software on a separate machine on your network, WAN balancer gives you the ability to tag your gaming machine and your streaming box. And you have the ability to send your traffic from your streaming box out in one interface and your gaming box out the other. So that way we're not commingling data on the same, same interface and competing for bandwidth on that same WAN interface. Because if you don't have a synchronous internet connection, in other words, the, ups, the upload is the same as the download. So you have gigabit download, gigabit upload. If you're like most people who are on a DOCSIS based network infrastructure for internet access and you have a gigabit download, but say only 30 or 40 megabits of upload, then that can quickly become saturated, cause the internet connection to slow down and, and cause a poor experience, especially if you're trying to do too much on one interface. And so what this allows you to do is tag your server and your streaming server and your gaming box, and you can push that network traffic out different interfaces. And as you can see here, my streaming box is going out gig two on the destination WAN, and my gaming box is out gig one. And so they're never competing for the same upstream bandwidth on the same interface. And that is one huge, huge strength of WAN balancer. And that is built right into the firewall. Um, another thing that is interesting is IPsec VPN. Um, if you need to set up a site to site VPN between your home and your office, um, or your home in another location, whatever it may be, you have the ability to do that with IPsec. And OpenVPN I used for inbound VPN connectivity to my home so that I can access all of my, my devices um, securely via a VPN connection to the house. And then of course, Tunnel VPN is another app that is offered that is used quite often to push all of your network traffic going out your WAN interfaces over a VPN tunnel, like for example, Astral or NordVPN, uh, so that you can secure and privatize your traffic a little bit using one of those services as much as you can with those services anyway. But that's a debate for another time. So for example, if I have phones and iPads that I wanna 
tunnel VPN out using Astral, then I can specify specific hosts by tagging them or using their IP address on my network. And then those devices automatically get pushed out via an Astral VPN service or a Nord VPN service, depending on whatever your VPN service is. And that can be extremely useful while at the same time not pushing out data coming from my streaming devices like Apple TVs uh, or Netflix or Fubo. So devices and applications, right? Um, you can bypass the tunnel VPN using rules so that you don't run into VPN blocks on those streaming services. And obviously we're using uh, IDS intrusion prevention, uh, threat prevention, and we have web cache, fish blocking and virus blocking. Um, all those apps are running on the network as well. So that is a fairly high level 30,000 overview foot overview of Untangle Firewall. And like I said, you don't have to be an IT expert to deploy this. Um, you don't need to be an IP expert to run it. You know, if you have uh, fairly basic uh, networking capabilities and, and if you're hooking up a, an internet router at your house and deploying uh, access points, and you can probably deploy this fairly easily. And so you should definitely consider putting something like this in place in your house and getting rid of that legacy hardware-based router that could be inviting bad guys into your house if it hasn't been updated in a while. So anyway, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you again soon.